Hello footies, welcome along to your latest dose of FIFA Ultimate Team goodness. We are Foot in Review, powered by footcoaching.com. It is Friday, June the 30th, 2023. My name is Dan Wimbush, otherwise known as Wimby. I am joined by the King of the North, Ingvi, and the Foot Teddy Bear, the man formerly known as Coach Slayer, Chris, aka Grandpapa Mac. Lots to get into today. It is Shapeshifters Team 3. We've had a couple of end of an era players for us to get our thoughts on and much, much more. Plus, we're going to answer that very burning question. Has Shapeshifters gone a little bit too far and is it getting a bit silly or is this the fun that we need at the end of the cycle? As mentioned, joined by two legends of the foot in review scene. Ingvi, how are you, my friend? Good evening, Dan. I'm quite good, actually. A little bit uh, on the waiting uh, bench, as we talked. But other than that, I'm really good. Yeah, you know, last week you know, we had kebab gate with you getting a free kebab, and this week, this week you're waiting on a, a on a washing machine. So you never know, two might turn up. Yeah, I wish I would get the washing machine for free, but uh, I don't think that's going to be possible. But you never know. You never know. And Chris is with us as well. Chris, long time since I've been on the show with you, my friend. Great to have you on. Thank you very much, mate. Looking forward to it. Right, let's get into it. Uh, Shapeshifters Team Three. Uh, I gave it a uh, a far less glamorous name before we hit the record button, but we've got kids listening. Um, so we'll ki- stick to calling it Shape Shifters. Um, but that probably gives away the hint of what I think of this promo at the moment, guys. Um, Ingvi, let's let's start with the positives here. There are some really fantastic cars that would get into anybody's team. Uh, yes, there is. There are some very good cars, and of course they are uh, yeah, equally priced, I guess, uh, as usual. So I can't afford any of them uh i think you're kind of uh, talking about a certain Henri that maybe have a proper card for uh yeah for once in a fifa uh with very good agility and five star skimmer five star week so he looks really good uh, start him as a right uh, winger right midfielder or you can start him as a cam but which one thing that's kind of annoying for me is why is he left footed? Yeah. A li- I, know, I mean, I know, I know he's five star weak foot, but still, he's still going to kind of do all his cool stuff with his right foot. And that's kind of how I want to remember an icon is that they use the normal strong foot in game. But uh, yeah, I guess we can't have it all. I mean, I think the bigger problem with the card for me, Chris, is that this Thierry Henry card is currently 12 and a half million coins. Um, and, you know, you look at the other big gun in this promo team as well. Uh, Paul Pogba, five star, five star, Paul Pogba, striker card. He's eight million coins as well. Just goes to uh, emphasize how low the drop rate is in these very top cards. That theme has continued right from day one in FIFA 23 and it's not letting up. No, I think the evil twin is back with a vengeance. Um, team three, I mean, that we've got here. I think the Henri card, uh, I know it's got a wide, but I think he's definitely a striker. I think you wouldn't want to play that Henri card anywhere else. You'd need to shift him out there, especially with the, the you know the five-star weak foot. That's an ideal centre player, that one. And uh, the Pogba one, again, you know, it's a great six-foot-five Again, he's, but this is a weird one. He's a centre forward. I think he's probably more a midfielder than I would be looking for a striker. So potentially you'd need to maybe juggle the team around if you did happen to have the coins. We're looking at the kind of nace of this world, don't we? Uh, to, to afford those two players. Again, I think um, the top cards are really good. And then the, the rest, when we come on to them, are maybe a little bit meh. Yeah, a, f- a lot that are just, yeah, I mean, meh is the perfect word, right? I mean, a couple <laughs> of other. Ones that stand out, Bastian Feinsteiger has got uh, a shapeshifter icon card, a centre-back or right-back, 2.6 million as we record this around 8 o'clock on Friday night. Uh, great pace, 90 pace, 97 defending, 97 physical. Easy, I think, one of the best defenders in the game um, right off the bat as well. And Xiao Felix, cards always deliver. Um, I was using his, was it foot birthday, Ingvi, he yeah. had this year? Yeah, 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 I was using that card for... For quite a few weeks, and it really, uh, really delivered playing as a left forward in a 4 3 2 1. Um, so I'd love to get my hands on this one as well. And then, yeah, just just really also runs really for the rest of the side. I mean, you've got the the meme card of this team has to be Harry Maguire. People have joked about this Harry Maguire striker card. Well, you finally got it if you've been asking for it. Um, five star skill moves, four star weak foot. He's less than 500,000 coins as well. Uh, you've got uh, Klosterman. 
who's been shifted dramatically from a centre back to a left back, uh, Resilian, who's been shape shifted from a left back to a right back, uh, and then you've got a pair of Figo twins, one who's a striker and who has got a five star skill moves, four star weak foot, and a central midfielder who's got a four star skill moves, five star weak foot. Can I just uh, say something about? Yeah, Figo? please do. But why can't the Figo striker have five star weak foot? I would rather have a five foot. Five foot, yeah, that's a little bit small, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little bit too eager. Uh, I would rather have five star weak foot on a striker than a five star skimmers. Uh, uh, I was about to say, it's silly. Yeah. I don't understand it. Yeah. yeah. Pros I mean, would probably enjoy it, but uh, I don't skill, so uh, yeah. I mean, I think as well as the Ruslan card, as well as they've shape shifted his position from one side of the, the defence to the other, they've actually managed to change his foot. So he's went from a left footed player to a right footed player. And uh, so that's the same as the same with the Henri card. It's like they're, they're, they're happy to change certain bits and pieces, but when it comes to those cards, do not make them super special. They're, they've made a bit of, I don't know if I made a mistake with them, but I think it would be good. I think the one that's really weird again is, and I, I'm trying my head around it, I'm doing my best. I have done the Peter Cech card, and, and him and I don't go on too great. As the, I take it, Hugo Lloris. He's a central midfielder at 1.2 million. Um, <laughs> five star weak foot, four star skills. Really good stats on him. Um, but again, I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you look at his reactions, 97 balance, 95 agility is a little bit weak, but. Again, I don't know if people want to... Do you want to spend one point? Either, this is the way I feel about it, either love the fact that goalkeepers are playing outfield and you're happy to accept it, or if you're a bit of a traditionalist like myself, you still have an uneasy feeling about it. Well, look, let's get into it because we've had some um, questions on this into our mailbag, which, of course, you get access to if you are a member of our Discord. You get Discord access by signing up to our Patreon. That's at patreon.com forward slash foot in review. Lots of great benefits uh, from coaching discounts to access to exclusive extra shows. And of course, everybody gets into our wonderful Discord. Great community there that's only growing and getting better um, week in, month, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. Um, and we've had one from Talking Foot, aka John. He said, genuine thoughts on the shapeshifter as all these goalkeepers on the shapeshifters as all these goalkeepers into outfield, etc. Understand an outfield player being made a goalkeeper if he played in goals for a team at some stage as an emergency. But all of this is just so annoying to see. And Hocking has said, I am over all these goalies outfield. I played three matches last night, my first all week. Each game had Petr Cech up front and he was so stupidly good, it was just annoying. Not that he was good as such, but how more, how can a goalie be that good up front? And he is likely better than actual strikers that play there. I'm sure the same can be said for the goalies who play in defence, etc. It's just silly, in my opinion. Um, Ingvi, we kind of heard what Chris was had to say. I mean, we, we've we talked about this. I remember a couple of weeks ago, and I chatted with Nath as well about this, um, about the whole shape-shifter argument of players playing out of position. And to me, it's just, you know, I, I think it's silly. But I agree with Hocking, but what do you think? Yeah, I don't mind... Uh, before earlier years, I think the shapeshifter were based on positions that players actually played some time during their career, like the Sala one that was a left back. He played left back for a while. I don't know if it was youth level or whatever it was. Then I think it's okay, uh, fair enough. But uh, I could kind of understand uh, Pepe Reina if he was a centre midfielder because he actually played uh, half for Liverpool during preseason as a centre mid because of injuries. So okay, funny, but when they just throw random Lurie, uh, Neuer as a striker, and uh, yeah, we know Peter Cech, uh, the VMS card. I don't mind one or two, but I think now it's uh, it's it's too much uh, too much for me. Yeah, I mean, Chris, we were talking just before uh, we went on air. And to use a, a wrestling analogy, apologies for those of you who don't like fake fighting. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, people often say, well, how, how do you watch wrestling? It's, you know, it's fake fighting. It's predetermined. And there's this thing called the suspension of disbelief. It's the same thing you have when you're watching like a Marvel film that, that stops you from thinking, OK, well, there's a bloke over there who's got a camera. Um, he's reading off an auto cue, et cetera, et cetera. It's that suspension of disbelief, that ability to see past an obvious, something that's obviously fake and just get into it for what it is. And I just feel that the shapeshifters promo is tilted a bit far. To go back to the wrestling, you know, wrestling has always had people like The Undertaker, this supernatural being who can make magic happen and lightning appear and stuff like that. 
but he stood out because he was like the only one. If he had been fighting a load of Marvel superheroes on Raw every Monday night, I don't think the audience would still be there. And to me, that's where the shapeshifters promo is going. It's I, I played weekend league this morning and the amount of teams running around with Petr Cech, uh, as English said, Neuer, um, Buffon in defence, VMS in midfield. To me, I'm just sat there thinking, I, I may as well just be playing Mario Superstar Soccer at this rate. Yeah, there is has to be some sort of realism in the game, hence why we you know we don't have any women in the game. That would have been the better idea they have been doing than putting goalkeepers in there. Why didn't they actually include some female players would have been a far more better and more understandable part of the promo. Again, you know, as I say if you're if you're in for a bit of fun and we've talked about this, I think we're at the silly stage of this this, this season. You know, we've grounded the game for nine months. Um and we'll talk about maybe we'll talk about rewards in your weekend league and my brothers as well. Again, it is, it is, it's sports entertainment now, isn't it? It's not a football simulator. <laughs> you know, and I'm going to take that WWE phrase. It's sports entertainment. You know, what's next? You've got Peter Cech climbing up onto the uh, on the crossbar and <laughs> uh, people elbowing the goalkeeper, you know, and then people doing DDTs in the middle of the, the, the centre circle. Again, I, I, I get it. See if you like it and you love it and you love rocking Peter Cech and he's a hero, I get it. But for me, it just takes a little bit away from the game. A game that we have grind for nine months. It's almost like EA has come along and went, right, guys, you've grinded the game for nine months. We're going to put all the stuff you've learned, how to play the game, you know, for foot coaching, etc. I just throw it in the bin and we're going to put Peter Cech up front, wearing his hat, looking amazing and scoring some wild goals. And, uh, you know, Buffon, I see that uh, some guys have put on Twitter that he's almost the same, he's the same body type as Maldini, uh, his birthday card, I think it is. And he's also got better stats than that. I mean, that is just just madness. Yeah, it's, I, I completely agree. And look, I don't want this to be uh, old man yells at cloud mm-hmm. kind of thing. Because look, I, get like, fun out. Well, I'll just say this, when we, you like wrestling, so you're, you're allowed to say that. I'm a non-wrestling fan, so you can say whatever <laughs> you want. Uh, calling it fake fighting, though, I think you may get a few uh, burns on Twitter coming up. Hey, look, I love wrestling. I'm going I to know. watch uh, I'm going to watch AEW wrestling at Wembley in a few weeks' time. But look, I, I completely agree. But what I want to say is that I don't want this to be seen like, oh, God, you know, you shouldn't be having fun using these goalkeepers. If you are, fantastic. I'm just saying from, from my own personal point of view, uh, I... I've always accepted that, you know, and some people have said, oh, well, you know, things like Alain Weyron and having icons in there is, you know, it's not realistic in the first place. But again, it's it's easier to suspend your disbelief of, on the, on those fronts than it is seeing get Petacek curling in a 25-yard Traveller uh, mm. against you. It just, yeah, it's, to me, it's just moved a little bit away from, you know, I, I quite like the semi-realism of foot. And I think this just goes more towards the, quarter realism yeah I mean, and uh-huh. yeah no for sure i think what's next is you say do we find an undertaker card now you know playing up front you may as well you, you know that's the same thing isn't it because actually peter check and all right maybe a better football player than undertaker but really is it going to be that great up front do you know what i mean and i'm showing sure my age now do we have the rock uh, the boss in midfield, the midfielder enforcer. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. And that's what FIFA's managed to stay away from. And that's where some football games maybe lost a bit themselves uh, in days gone by. You had some weird, wacky games that came out, particularly in the, the early 2000s and the 90s. I, I get it. I get it. It's, it's fun time. And I'm going to hopefully talk about it later on, about having a bit of fun with the game. But this is just too far for me. And uh, one, or one, two maybe, but this is a constant barrage now of goalkeepers. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head there because this is uh, this is skirting very, very close to that whole line of you may as well just have completely fiction fictionary players in there. Um, you know, they had the link up with Marvel for the World Cup. You know, at this yeah. point, you might as well put Captain America in centre defence uh, and the Hulk up front because they're about as realistic, uh, I have to say, it, as Petr Cech being a 94, 95 pace, whatever he is, five-star weak foot striker. It's, you know... The only the only thing Petacek has in common with that card is I mean it is Petacek, but that's that's literally it. It's his face and his body. It's mm-hmm. got nothing to do with his actual abilities on the pitch anymore. Um, so look, it's, it's a very marmite thing. I've seen both sides of the argument, I, and again, whatever way you get fun out of this game, especially you know we're talking in June now. We are nine months into a game. If you've been, you're still getting enjoyment, or even if you're new to the game and getting enjoyment out of it. Please do. Please keep going for it. I mean, it's great. At least they've made these cards very accessible. They're very cheap. Um, and actually, from a, if we're talking about from a person that doesn't like it, point of view, Chris, I said I speed speed ran my weekend league earlier today. I, I got 14 wins in the space of about three and a half hours. Very unusual for me. 
But I actually found it's my massive advantage that so many people were using the likes of Czech and VMS. Um, they were very, they were much easier to defend than Mbappe yes. and away Ron. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, if anything, I, I, I think it, in a weird way, it actually helps those of us that aren't going that way because I think a lot of people don't actually know how to get the best out of these players or they're, they're overvaluing how good those players are just based on stats. No, definitely. I think I wanted to say one thing about this promo, and I think it's been the premium uh, chemistry that some players have got, have made some really, really great cards there. And, uh, you know, I've just had a quick look where I, could, I can make a full shapeshifters team. Uh, we, all right, Peter Check up front, to be fair, because he's an icon. And I think the only <laughs> person who doesn't have a full chem is the young in midfield, and he's got two. But there's a lot of good players there that you can actually use, and this is probably this. So I think the premium bit, I really, really enjoy that. And again, as I say, you know, if you're listening, two goalkeepers max, I think that's more than enough. And that, you know, the Peter Cech one is cool with his hat on. Uh, we just need a Yashin wearing his bonnet. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, lots of lots of cards in this promo team that are good. I mean, Nicholas Pepe's got uh, a premium shapeshifter striker card that at the moment is less than 100k. And again, I can't see a lot wrong with this card, Chris. He's down to 90k now. Five star week for finesse shot. Outside the foot shot trait, okay, only four star skill moves, but 92 composure. Finishing's up at 92. I mean, every stat's in the right place. And it's it's a great time to just, if you have got a couple of million coins left, it's a really good time just to experiment and have some fun with these cards because they're all very, very usable and very, very meta. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the one that, that I'm very disappointed in is El Nasri, the, the Moroccan star for the World Cup. You look at his card, his left wing, his premium, he's 91 rated. He's got stats in all the right places. He's pretty quick. And then they give him a three-star weak foot. You know, I mean, that just is, you know, that's just a killer. Particularly when you consider that he's a player of the month for Liga, had a four-star week for it. Again, just does not make any sense. Why have they done that to this card? That would be one that would be really interesting. I think that's reflective of his price at 29 and a half. Um, but again, as I say to people, if you're playing weekend league, have a bit of fun. Throw in these players and just go for it. Yeah. I'm sure you have a great time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you may have noticed that we've uh, we've not been freezing Ingvi out of this conversation, by the way. Uh, if you are watching our video show, you will have seen Ingvi had to make a dash away. That washing machine has arrived. Whether he got uh, an extra one, we're not sure. But hopefully he's going to be back by the end of the show. But Chris, we will we will plough on. You know, we, we've touched on a couple of these um, SBCs and players we've had available over the course of the week as well. Uh, we should start with that goalkeeper, Gigi Buffon being given a centre-back card. Again, it looks an absolutely fantastic card. It is a premium shapeshifter as well, so he gets Max Chem. Uh, it's a card that might actually catch a few people out because he is playing for Palmer, who are in Serie B yes. at the moment. So if you have thrown him in and wondering why he's not giving any of your Serie A cards a boost, that is why. Um, you know, I grew up, you know, watching football in the late 90s when Palmer were an absolute powerhouse, Chris. So even me, it took me by surprise to see them down in uh, second tier. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember them playing Rangers a few times as well. So, yeah, no, I was shocked as well as you, you know. And, and as I say, I've just quickly said, because as I say, on Twitter, they've compared the foot birthday Maldini card to him. Uh, he has uh, total in-game stats of 2,544. That's Buffon. And the Maldini card has 2,195. And there is very little that Maldini is a better, has higher stats than him. Um, and the only one is really is, and look at interceptions, Maldini's 97, Buffon's 96. So again, if you can suspend disbelief, this is an amazing card uh, when you consider the price difference when you've got Maldini at 2.2 and you know just under 60,000 for Buffon. So again, a good fun card. Yeah, and at worst, a good fodder dump as well to get a 90 red card. Uh, faced him a few times. Can't say he gave me too many issues. Again, I think it might be that. It's the problem with a lot of these goalkeepers, isn't it, Chris, is that no matter what they've done to their stats, the body types... Yeah just don't seem to be conducive and Buffon's another high and average six foot four player. So he was quite easy um, to sort of get around. But again, he wasn't complete garbage or anything like that. So Buffon again, nice and cheap. Um, another player that's been a favourite in FIFA and it's always been very hard to link. And this one, I'm really disappointed he's not got a premium. Uh, Garbadol, um, the Croatian centre-back who plays for RB Leipzig. Um, he's now been given a CDM card that can also play in CM as well. Chris, 140K for this. Probably the best. I'm trying to think of off the top of my head if there are many better, but if you're running a, a Bundesliga side, probably the best CDM in that league. 
Yeah, I mean, five star weak foot, uh, 93 rated starts again in all the right places. You look at it, there's very little that is near. I always look at balance and agility. Agility at 82 is maybe a little bit of a problem, but his balance is 94, reaction is 95. Good ball control as well and composure. Strong, aggressive player, as you expect from him. I mean, just don't tell Messi that. I think he's still part of those memes <laughs> from the World Cup. Um, standing tackle at 94, so a lot of good stats in there. So, yeah, if you're running a Bundesliga team, definitely one. To do, I think I know if you'd get good Ken for Becker, the centre back. I think both of these have used him, haven't they? He's yeah, a, he's a premium card and no particularly expensive. I don't think either, so I, I don't sure much start uh, Ken he'd give you, but he'd certainly give you some. Uh, and Modric, if you wanted to rock him, I suppose as well, you could put those two together. They get a country link. If you get a yeah, there's just that like hesitation. I you call him a great uh, CDM. He has got that high high work rate, uh, which is never ideal if you want him to be pure stay back. Uh, but there's not a hell of a lot of options that I can think of off the top of my head in that league. So again, one well worth dumping some fodder into, you said for 140k. Uh, we've had tonight, Chris, uh, before we go on to uh, our end of an era player, we talked about at the top of the show. We had Trent Alexander-Arnold released. He's been given a striker card. It's an SBC, this 615k is coming in at. Five-star skill moves, four-star weak foot. 95 pace, 94 shooting, 93 passing, 94 dribbling, 89 physical. And whilst the defending is 70, it is still very serviceable. High medium work rate. But, uh, I mean, again, I just have a hard time getting excited about this card. Maybe it's because, you know, we need Ingvi here. We need the Liverpool man to get us excited about this one. That's why we've frozen them. That's why people are listening. <laughs> uh, we've just put a screen up. Actually, that is isn't Ingvi's true picture. I've just uh, come into there. I mean... If you're a Liverpool fan, tremendous, amazing. I mean, the fact that he's a cam and I think he was playing, you were saying he was playing number 10 for England, is not really much of a shapeshifter. I think this is just Klopp has changed his position because he cannot defend for, for Toffee. It's a great card. I mean, I just think, is there a lot? Is, is the Prem potentially missing the star players um, at the moment? That's the thing for me is where you get the chem from for him. I mean, the Harry Kane team of the... The season card's a great card. It's an absolute menace if people who play them. I see a lot of the red ones in there, and he just seems to be able to body players out of the way. But apart from that, as they're much in the Prem, the Kevin De Bruyne, you don't see many of them either. I think the Prem has certainly been surpassed a little bit uh, from my point of view, and I don't see this card. Unless you're a Liverpool fan, I don't think many folk are going to spend 615000 on him. Yeah, I mean, if, if we're taking it on stats value, I mean, he's got everything in the right places for a striker. The pace is there. The finishing's 95. Shot power's 95. 96 composure as well, which is great. The reactions are at 94. Good agility and balance. This should be a really good card. But like you said, Chris, I think the fact it's at that 615k price point, I imagine people's coin totals are dwindling mm -hmm. uh, as we go through more and more gamble SBCs and packs like that. So it's a lot to commit to this card. A lot of people, I guess, would have already gone past their 84 by 30s and 84 by 25s as well. So that might not help you bring the price down. But this is one I think it's very hard to judge this as we sit here at 8 o'clock on a Friday night. I always think cards like this need a good review. So if you go wherever you know, good reviews are, or again, if you're part of our Discord, I'm sure some of our community will be unlocking this card. He has got that unique body type as well. And five for eleven. So on paper, maybe I've been a bit too hasty um, mm. giving this card the meh treatment, but mm -hmm. it's at a price point where I'm certainly not going to gamble, Chris, no. until I've I've got some good yeah. views on uh, how good this one is. I mean, I think you need to bring in someone like, say, the Zaha card, which is a premium one. He's two hundred twenty-two thousand. You know, in terms of a prem thing, you could potentially use the Richardson card. Uh, he's at three hundred seventy-five, and the Martial card, ninety-seven cm. He's at a million coins. So I think you're going to have to, if, unless you're rocking a Prem team, you're going to have to certainly think about bringing players in to, to strengthen that Chem style from. Because I don't think he's good enough to play without any Chem whatsoever. I know John Foot coaching would probably say I'm wrong, but I just feel you need a bit of Chem on him. Um, unless you play Harry Maguire up front. But I don't even think my United fans are going to do that card, are they? No, I do not think so. Um, but. If you're talking about players from the unknown to the player that's very, very much known, Agola Kante has been given an end of an era SBC to mark his departure from Chelsea off to Saudi Arabia. Chris, most people, the reaction to, to this SBC from most was just one word, and that was overpriced. I, I cannot understand how people think that. I mean, yes, it's come down in price a little bit over the coming days. It's now around a million coins. 
But you look at this card, it's N'Golo Kante. You think of his team of the year cards in years past and the value they were still holding at this stage. For a million coins for this player, I, I do not understand how you can call this overpriced. Expensive, yes, but it's not overpriced. Mm. I think it's just where it is in the game cycle. I think that's probably where we are at the moment. I think that's that's probably, you know, let's be honest. I was going to say we probably won't see this card when these cards are again, but that um, Saudi Arabian League is a full of stars now uh, with Ronaldo and Benzema. So you could actually produce quite a strong team there. And I think Neves has went for Wolves as well, and there's more going. I know I'd ever use them, but Jota for Celtic, I think, is potentially going there as well. So we may see that league next year being very, very strong. Um, he's French, so you, you've got that good nationality there. He's always brilliant in game. Let's be honest. I think you and I have always tried to use this card if we can. You know, everything about him, his balance at 99, reactions at 99. You know, he just fits the game. His stamina is 99 as well. You know, defensive awareness, 99. Standing tackle, 99. It just is all there. I just think he's he's up against cheaper cards that are, might not be that much different from him. You know, and I think that's the problem. I think it's just come just slightly too late in the game cycle, this card. But uh, if you've got the fodder, uh, I think there's no many cards better to put your fodder in. Yeah, I agree. And, we you know, we just talked about him, someone like a Garvedal, uh, you know, knocking around for 130k. But if you go back and look at the Kante Team of the Year card from FIFA 22, on the 1st of July, that card was still 1.2 million coins this mm. time last year. And it's Kante. I mean, people... We'll compare this and and Ingvi on our Discord, you know, compares him to certain other players. I think he compared him to Milner, I think it might have been the other day. And there's not a lot stats wise between the two. But this is the perfect example of a player who just plays above his stats. I'm still using the foot birthday on my main account. And I still think it's an absolutely sensational card that is every bit as good as all but the very top tier. You know, maybe you've got a Titans Vieira that's better as a pure CDM. But, you know, I I think this guy is next level. I am going to complete it on the main. Uh, I'm not actually playing very much on my main account at the moment, which is the reason I haven't got it done. But um, I wouldn't hesitate to spend a million coins on this, especially as we get, you know, they EA did announce initially this was going to be out for two weeks. Uh, they have announced actually it's going to be out now, I think till the end of August. Yeah, you've got 61, right. 61 days, so you've got plenty of yeah. time to complete it. And I think, as I say, for us guys who have played FIFA for a long time, he has a special place in our heart, uh, this card. And I think, you know, if I get forward, I might start just, as you say, using them and then just doing a bit of fun with them. Good, A good yeah. nationality as well and a good league. I mean, I'm yeah. slagging off the Prem, but actually that's a great card <laughs> for the Prem. Yeah, and even if you end up running this card on one or two chem, he's still going to be completely OP. Yeah, it's so, be brilliant. Uh, if, you, if you do want to see Dem and you are trying, I would say that this is the kind of card where if you are trying to still eke out and maybe improve on your best kind of weekend league performance, this is the card that might just give you that tiny little bit of edge um to do so because i do think that if there were pro tournaments and stuff still running i do think this is a card that might well be in pro teams the only thing that ever holds kante back is the height at five six but he makes up for that in his mobility um if you are looking for fodder to complete things like kante or those other spcs the shapeshifters cup is back chris i think you can get an 85 by 10 for completing it um i think you've got to have three shapeshifters in your team uh, to get each one of these done but uh, not much more to say about that one. We also, no player at the end. It's a pack this time. Um, do have an objective for a shapeshifters player from Team 3. We've got uh, Gavi, Javi from Barcelona. Chris, he's been given a 93, yep, I 93. believe. Yep, 93. Yep, 93 rated right back card. Worth your time, worth going out of your way to get this one done? I think they're all worth going doing it your way because some of them, you know, the upside down players you get automatically. So we've just had one of them through the week there. You say Lumeca, um, and his name is Levi Lumeca, plays for Twa. Um, another player I'm, I'm very much aware of, but 94 <laughs> rated. Um, but again, if you do these cards and you do these uh, organically as you're playing the game, these are ideal fodder if you wanted to do something like the Cante card. And that wouldn't be such a hit. I mean, I think that million coins is probably... I would be surprised if, if you play the game regular, if you have to spend any coins at all to finish that Kante card. Because um, we're getting players left, right and centre at the moment like this. Um, you know, So I would do the, do the Gavi card. Because let's be honest, we won out um, next week and there probably will be another upside down player. And they were 94 rated because I think they're 64 uh, to start with. So these guys are just getting twisted to so 94. So you're going to have three 94 cards. You've got the Link, who's South African. 
uh, your Englishman there, and then probably one next week. So that would probably get an SBC done of Canty's pretty easy, the very top ones. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, going back to Javi, uh, right back card, that five star week for Handy, because you can obviously move him around a bit. Um, actually, as a card, I don't think there's a great deal of difference between him and Molina, the team of the season card from Atletico. But look, if you are rocking a few Barcelona players, of course, we had the uh, Sergio Busquets and the Jordi Alba and the Veneer SBCs out as well. So this is an easy one to help with the chemistry on that front. Um, or maybe you're trying to get uh, Lewandowski in there. So it's, it's a decent card. And as you say, for free, I think um, it, eight games is the max it's going to take you. But I think in most cases, again, people will get this done pretty naturally. Um it's win eight squad battles games on semi-pro difficulty or rivals or champs or having three Spanish players in your 11. Mm. So again, if you've done a Jordi Alba and a Busquets, maybe just plop David De Gea in gold and, and you'll just get this done. The only slight one, and I always find this annoying, Chris, is they've chucked a assist three goals using a cross <laughs> into this one. So you might have to dip into one squad battles game yeah, on semi-pro so. difficulty just to knock that one off. Yeah, that's that's an easy. just do that. Fire it up, get it in it. Because I mean, to be fair, it's a fairly easy level. It's a semi-pro. You know, do that. Get five or six goals up, and then you can rubber band it and go make yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. And by the time you come back, you'll have done that one. Um, yeah. From there, and I have to say, hopefully, EA keeps us going, including foot champs into these cards. It's been that's been great because they've had the, the foot champs objectives as well uh, as the rival ones, you know, you're getting the, the, the points. So I've hopefully EA are taking this on board and seeing what success it's been and keep it going for next year's game as well. Have you been building these one league teams for foot champs? No, I have to say I haven't. That, that's one thing I haven't done. I've, that's the only bit I've just left out. Cause I think there's plenty of packs. If you just rummage around, you'll find objectives, SBCs and cups, etc. Again, the cups have been great. That's another big plus point. For this time of year, I'm glad to see that Shapeshifters has come back. They're good fun, um, and I hope for that again will be uh, on in next year's game. So no, I haven't I haven't done that. I mean, I mean the, the Saudi Arabian League one is that full squad, isn't it? You need yeah. to have that would be exceptionally difficult to do, even with the likes of Ronaldo in there. And uh, you know, I just I think that's just far too much. If they'd kept the big leagues, I could understand that. I think even if they'd just done it. Um... With, with with five in your starting mm -hmm. lineup, I yeah. think that would have been fair. I just, yeah, I think it's a legacy far. And look, based on my limited experience, uh, as I said, I played through all of my champs games this morning. I played nine, well, I played all 20. I gave, gave one away at the end, but I didn't see a single person rocking a one league team. I think last week I may have seen one. Uh, people just, most people aren't doing this. Maybe if you're a player who's comfortably getting 14, 16 wins every week, you might have that ability to do so. And, you know, other people have made the good point. You know, you can, if you get your weekend league done quite quickly, you can just go out and buy all these special players. Um, and you'll probably, especially if you're good at sniping, um, you might not even lose any coins at all. As long as you sell them quite quickly and get your weekend league games done early, um, it's probably a bad idea to buy them on the Friday and then wait all the way till Sunday night to sell them. But if you're, you know, you're going to get most of your weekend league done on, say, Saturday, buy them first. Buy them just before you play your first game. Sell them at the end of it um, if you do really want those packs. But I, I agree with you, Chris. I think there are, there is enough way to generate fodder in this game, a unless you really are just a. I, I don't care about my weekend league and my results. I just want to get this pack. Um, then you can probably crowbar your way mm -hmm. to uh, to the eight wins with those specific teams that you need to do so. Um, speaking of fodder, Chris, Shack Attack. Another question in the mailbag has asked, Chaps, can you objectively discuss the pros and cons of Tony Cruz versus the 84 by 30? And what would your choice be? Please and thank you. So, Chris, first thing, have you reached level 30 yet? I haven't. I know you have. I happen to be on your stream. So if anybody's interested, Twitch, it's Wimby86. We're on the stream. We we all kind of, we did a poll. I think it was an actual even number split, wasn't <laughs> it? it? Was. So the chat was absolutely useless. They were split straight down the middle. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go. I'm going to be taking that card because I had these 90 cards, uh, 91 cards, sorry. I think it was Winter Well card, if I remember the top of the head looking at it. And that was a tremendous card. And he's a great card in game. Um, and there's just so much about it that I really like. So for me, and the fact is, I'm just a bit worried they get loads of gold uh, if you take that. Uh, if you're doing a specific SBC, I would suggest that you take the, the fodder pack. 
But if you're not really that bored, I think that card's going to be a good fun card to use. Yeah, look, I again, I did a poll. Uh, as Chris said, it landed even. So I flipped a Lego minifigure to decide which would win. And the minifigure landed on the side of Tony Cruz. And I've got to say, I'm really glad it did because I used Cruz this morning. I thought he was excellent um, as a box-to-box playing him in a 4-3-2-1 as the just pure box to box, not the not the outright attacking centre mid of the three or the outright defensive one. He was the one doing a bit of both, put a shadow on him. That was excellent. I think he popped up with five goals, uh, probably the same amount of assists as well. He took the place of Marcos Lorente, and I did notice a, a little bit of a boost, especially attacking wise, on Lorente. So really happy with him. Um, and the thing as well for the eighty four by thirty, which is what some guys in the chat were saying. And it kind of leads me into another point I wanted to make, Chris. And I did talk about it, I suppose, when we were running through the team, talking about the likes of Henri and Pogba. Is that the drop rate on these very top cards is so unbelievably bad that, uh, you know, it's the whole, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me mm. twice, shame on me. You've got to have got to this stage in the foot cycle, Chris, and realising that these massive jumbo fodder packs so rarely give out anything game-changing. Mm. No, definitely. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've packed a Socrates card, which I absolutely love and adore. He come from the two-player pack um, that you get when you do the, the crafting one. And then I packed uh, the Young, and he come for a three times 84 card uh, pack. Sorry. So as you say, every time I've put, picked one of these massive ones, you know, 10, 85s or whatever, it's been all gold or very, very, very low-value shapeshifters. Um I don't think A are silly. They do not put these cards very much in, in any packs, to be honest with you, and that's why the prices are so high at the moment. Um, yeah, so I would I'd stay away from fodder only unless you're going to do a specific SBC. Um, but I have so much fodder. I actually have can- I did the Cantona car- uh, card. I did the Beckham one. I did the big, massive goalkeeper one as well. And uh, these players are just languaging on my bench. Uh, I'm just using this game very much as a card collector at the moment. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm working towards Beckham at the moment, but uh, I still took Cruz anyway. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Beckham's got. I did use his loan. Well, I tried to use his loan for five games. Uh, twice people quit on me at nil nil. So um, yeah, cheers EA for again for that stupid mechanic. Um, That's really, something really... they need to fix for next year's game because I think people are getting very frustrated with that. I mean. As a community as well, if you're going to quit at nil now, look, what does it matter to you? You've lost the game anyway. Give it to your fellow player because I'm sure we've all benefited from a free win once upon a time. Uh, if you play weekend league, probably every other weekend league, you've probably got one. So why don't you just return the favour? I'd hate to think that people who are listening to this don't do that. Unfortunately, Chris, there are some people out there that are still abusing kickoff glitches uh, and still sending abusive messages and some people that um, unfortunately... Don't see the fun side of things. So, uh, yeah, uh, please, EA, if you do, do us a solid for EAFC. Uh, if you announce that when you're, you know, re- game revealing, which is coming up, I think, Chris, they said from July. So yes. we should be hearing news soon. So, look, if you announce that we will get the win if people quit at nil nil or, or when the scores are level, I guarantee you that pre orders will go up. A hundred percent. No, I may not be able to guarantee those things. See terms and conditions. <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll guarantee a hundred percent that I've got because that is the biggest frustration that people have. Because they've just, it's just as you say, you've got a loan card. Say it's the Ronaldo. It doesn't matter what the card is. You put money on your best players because you want to try them. You get to that screen. The guy kicks off. He kicks the ball and then he quits. And you think to yourself, "Thanks very much." That I didn't even get a win. It cost me contracts and on him and other players as well. So absolute waste of my time. Uh, so again, if you are listening to this pod and you do that, please stop. Absolutely. And he's back just in time for the grand finale. Ingvi, key question, did you get the washing machine you ordered? And more important, did you get one or did you get a free one? Uh, I got the right one. Uh, I thought it wasn't working, but I had forgot to turn on the water. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a little bit stressed. It's like, no. And then uh, the water and now it's running. So yes, all good to go. Excellent. No ones, but I, as long as it works, I'm happy. Well, look, we've uh, we've rattled through all the content. Um, I'll just circle back to uh, Trent Alexander Arnold because me and Chris were a little bit down just based on the price. Um, obviously, you being a Liverpool fan might appeal a bit more to you. Do you think this is a? Where do you kind of stand on this card? 
well, I had to do it since I'm a huge fan of the play in real life, of course. Uh, I think it's a little bit overpriced. I wish she was a center mid. Uh, that's one thing. And I also wish he had five-star weak foot and not five-star skill moves because he's not known for doing any skills, but I know that could happen. Well, Peter Cech is not very realistic, is he? Uh, his old pri half price, I think, would be nice. And um, then I I'm going to use him wide as a more like a right midfielder type of player. I've, I tried him in one match and he had some insane crosses and uh, assists. So uh, he does the job as a if you like to run up and down and, and do a few crosses in. And of course, his passing was spot on as well. Excellent. Well, I look forward to a more detailed review in the coming weeks. Again, head over to the Discord as well. Um, you can always, Ingvi, always around to ask questions. He's even got his own room, the Ask Ingvi room you yeah. know, over in the Discord. But um, gents, I think that just about wraps up the show. I mean, Ingvi, anything else you especially wanted to bring up before we go? Uh, you probably talked about the compensation rolling out for the... We uh... didn't. Oh, we didn't. nice. We got some compensation for the SPC that was supposed to be uh, five repeatable daily uh, team of the season slash moments uh, pack. And there was no moments in those. So the people that did them, they got their... Well, most of them, I think, have got them by now. Uh, the rollout started today. So uh, I did it twice and I got two packs and of course I got two the moments tubes. <laughs> uh, so hopefully most I think should have them today or within uh, 12 hours I think. I think it usually takes one day to roll up because I think there's so many affected that the SPC though. Uh, I think them almost three weeks to uh, kind of roll it out. So uh, that's a little bit too long. Uh, communication wasn't too good i think during this time because some people started oh no we're not going to get it now it's gone too long the ea forgot it or they moved on to other projects i don't know so uh i'm, I'm missing the communication I, just to, once a week they could have at least said that we're still working on the compensation this is taking a little bit longer than we would expect because it's uh yeah very detailed uh, thing they need to do to check everything but um yeah, hopefully people get something good from it. Well, I did uh, I did all five on my second account, and I don't think I got anything above a 91. Um, Chris, it's the, it was the equivalent of when a, you know, when a mate owes you money and they give you a, a tattered fiver. <laughs> uh, or they pay you in, they pay you back in like two Ps. <laughs> I've never, I never done any, so you guys, uh, I'm disappointed for you guys, but what did we expect for you to come, you know, Let's be honest, unless you're a big streamer, you're not getting much in these packs. Let's be through the most way. gritted of teeth. I'm sure mm -hmm. they sent out those compensation packs. Um, anything else, Ingvi? Uh, yeah, no more goalkeepers in, as outfield players. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, one thing. Uh, there will probably be an outfield player as a goalkeeper. I'm pretty sure we'll get one more of those. Uh, but I, I'm going to kind of be glad to see the back of, of this promo. It's, yeah, it's been, I, I don't mind the players like Seedorf and uh, Cruz and players like that because they're quite close to their normal positions anyway. And uh, that makes it a little bit more realistic to, to use them. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I think there's a, some kind of mental block for me using the Peter Cech uh, as a striker and things like that, I, I don't get them to, to kind of do what my opponents can get them to do. So uh, I'm looking forward to footies. I hope the players will be uh, fairly priced and easily easier, maybe obtainable. I don't think it's going to be super easy to get them. Uh, and please release the 85 times 10 SPC soon. <laughs> yes, bring it on. Uh, yeah, footies has been uh, widely reported to be the next promo. So we'll be going to that. If you've not been through a footy cycle before, so they hand out uh, really top tier versions of some of the favorite cards from over the game cycle. So like last year we had a, a Neymar. I think we've had all sorts of great Renato Sanchez's. We've had some fantastic cards. They're available in SBCs usually most of the time as well. Um, there was a swaps program that gave you an absolute ridiculous Ben Yedder as well so it's a great time of year um it's to... fun usually yeah and absolutely and that, I, that's why i can't kind of wait for that promo because 
when those cards are out, then the pay to check and uh, everybody else is going to be forgotten and uh, be put into an SPC pretty soon, I guess. Yeah, just wait until you start seeing the uh, pink version of Al Wayron running at you. Oh, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll all be begging for pay to check to come back. <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon. Yeah, as, a cent- as a center back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quite, quite. <laughs> Um, Chris, anything from you before we head off? Just a very quick question for me. How do redheads make sandwiches? <laughs> I don't know. Do I need to turn the recording off before you get the punchline? No, they use gingerbread. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's from a good yeah. friend on the Discord who asked me to say that. He knows who he is. Dearie yeah. me. Well, we won't give a real his identity. We'll just call him N Downs. Uh, no, that might be too. That might be, that might be too revealing. Let's just call him Nathan D. <laughs> on that note, we are going to wrap up the show again on Tuesday. If you didn't, uh, if you missed it, uh, Chris and John were on with Anna Foot. Um, yeah. Great show, great interview, great to have her on part of the show. Go check out her stream as well um, and follow her. Great, inspiring story, although part of me did die a little inside when she documented how she'd got to 20-0 and 0 in, what was it, 11 months, Chris? Uh, uh, 11 weeks. 11 weeks. 11 weeks. 11, 11, weeks. Weeks. I don't 11, 11 weeks. wins. She gets in in 11 weeks, 20 and 0. Indeed. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a fantastic show. Go check that one out. We'll be back. Uh, next week, we're going to be moving to a little bit more of a weekly schedule as we do head into um, July and August. Obviously, people are off on holidays. There's generally less content to talk about. Just general interest drops off. You know, we're all still playing the game. Uh, that's why I say, you know, consider joining up in the Discord because we're getting more daily updates. But uh, John's off for a few weeks. I'm going to be heading off as well. Um, so there'll be less people around to do the editing, do the production and things like that. So we'll try and do things, obviously, if there's lots of news around EAFC, we might boost the show, but uh, we will be at least providing one show per week. But um, mm. that remains to be seen. And of course, John may be heading off, but the fantastic team over at footcoaching.com are still going to be here. It is a great time of the year now, especially with all these top tier cards that can do all these things. Most cards can do things like five star skill moves as well. Go get yourself involved with footcoaching.com. Improve your game. Get yourself in the best possible place. We can all attest the fact that EA don't actually change this game very much from game to game. So don't be worried that, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to learn stuff for a game. It's not going to be out for very long. These teach you core fundamental basics that help you progress no matter what skill level you're at, whether you're someone who's trying to get to 9-11 wins for the first time or if you're trying to get up to that next barrier. Tailored programs to see you using cutting edge tools that professional football teams and professional esports teams use. So footcoaching.com for all of that. Again, patreon.com forward slash foot in review to uh, help support this show directly. Chris, where can people find you on social media? You can find me as the foot in review teddy bear on Twitter and on our wonderful discord uh, under grandpapa Mac. And we have just started a league. Uh, O'Bogger has started the league up. Uh, so that's good fun as well. So if you're thinking of joining the discord, not only have uh, Crete 24 coming up in next year, but we've got some good stuff going through the summer. A lot of fun games happening. Absolutely. And Ingby, where can people follow you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at Epnoni, and of course I'm on the Discord at uh, LittleUn95 and the same on EA forums at LittleUn95. Yep, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Wimby86. I've also started a new Twitter account, Wimby86, uh, a place for just solely my FIFA ramblings to keep uh, for all of those of you who are sick of me uh, lamenting Reading's demise. Uh, you can just follow me on Wimby86 <laughs> now for pure FIFA stuff. As I said, the show will be back next week. Again, keep an eye on foot coaching across all of our socials for details. If you've got any questions as well, fire them over there. Until then, one thing left to do, Chris. Drop we it. We are going to drop, drop it. it. Drop it. You. F. You. F. 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 You. F. You. T. 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 In the view. F. You.